Hi, what's up my friends across the globe? How are you all doing? And once again, thank you so much for your presence and for your audience. I appreciate it. Um, hi, what's up my African brothers and sisters? This message is actually for you, especially the young Africans who are contemplating moving to the West. Some people move to the West out of misinformation, disinformation, and outright propaganda that you consume from the Western media, like the BBC, CNN, and a bunch of them. Because all they showed you is the mega cities in America, like the New York cities, Chicago, LA. They don't show you Kentucky, West Virginia, some towns in the Midwest and the southern part of the United States. They will never ever show you that. So, and some people end up coming over here and they are shocked and disappointed because they were not prepared. We are not prepared because they have no idea exactly how things are here. So I'm not saying this to discourage you. I will never discourage you. I'm just putting out the right information and saying it as it is. Okay? So I'm going to lay out 10 points about the reality of living in the West, specifically in United States where I live. I don't know about Canada, United Kingdom, or anywhere else, but they are basically the same with different names. So my perspective is based on the United States. So let's plunge into that. Number one, is as soon as you are leaving the continent of Africa, just know that you are uprooting your root. You are cutting off the, your own branch of the family. You are just terminating it, discontinuing it in Africa, and you are coming to a different country to establish your immediate family and your descendants. When you come over here and you have children in America or UK, it's about 99 or 95% chance that those kids aren't moving back to Africa to live. They understand that they have African ancestry or they have Nigerian ancestry or Kenyan ancestry. That's as far as they know. They don't even know your town or your siblings or nothing. So they are completely disconnected from the root. And that is what it's going to be. So what it means is like in a few generations, you know, your, you, the descendants of your family can only hear about your name, that you existed, but they don't know your offspring or your descendants. But you have one, but they're just not connecting with them. It is scary. This is one thing that people have to think about because some of us, the second generation or third generations of immigrants, African immigrants in America, are facing this because we know that you know our children ain't going anywhere. They're not. They are Americans. So yeah, I think that is important for me. The second part is when you come over here, you're going to start all over. I don't care what degree that you have. When you come over here, you're going to have an element of Western degree or certification to get a job. That is when you get your residency papers straightened out. Because depending on what visa, that you have, that you came in with, whether you have a visa lottery or you have a professional visa and work visa, 
that way you can get job straight but you if you don't come in with none of these two visas you came in uh with a tourism or visiting visa that got expired hello it's going to be a talk of war and it takes years to rectify or to change your status to have residency and before that happens you are going to be working on the shadow of the system that means you're going to be working you know um under the table what we call it in america like you know working out of the system you know and getting paid cash and most of the time these undocumented immigrants are taken advantage of by the employers they don't even get paid minimum wage so you might want to have different kinds of many jobs you know working like a tool to survive so that's what it is so even when you get your certification it's not gonna kick in until you start working with the system the third point is um lack of family support and friend support here hello my people in this country everyone is on their own even if you have a sibling you know living in the same state as you or living out of state they have their schedule this is a rat race you will barely speak to your sibling because your schedule and theirs are not the same I mean, when people are out of work, they have a lot of things to do. They're literally trying to grasp a breath, let alone having someone hold them over the phone. No one is going to have the time to hold you hand by hand to help you explore issues or to help you. Not even a sibling can do that. And I'm going to tell you, even when you first got over here, People are not very patient to give you accommodation here. I mean, if you see anyone that gives you accommodation for two weeks, they are angel in the West. It's not common. So as soon as you get over here, you're going to be on your own. Even if you have someone helping you with accommodation, just know that it's not going to be more than a month and you're going to be facing the reality. So there is no support system. You are in there doing your thing, trying to figure it out in your struggle, alone in your own world. That comes to the fourth point, loneliness and isolation. Like I said, you are here alone by yourself. You are living on your own. You have no one to talk to. Even if we are going through hell, you have no one to, even have, having to get friends on the phone to talk to them, they may not have a lot of time to sit on the phone with you to talk about issues. Anyone talking to you on the phone is really a wonderful friend. So you're going to be here on your own. And loneliness and isolation can kick off depression so fast. So that is why most most of the time, people suffer a lot of depression and anxiety in this country. And depression is no joke. It's no joke. So, that being said, the fifth point is even when you manage to get your working papers, and then now you start working on the system. And before I go further. There is nothing you can do in this country, especially in America, without at least a minimum of, you know, uh, residency, green card. You can't go to school because education is very expensive. You're going to be paying as a foreign student, okay? So, but you can when you get a green card, so you can at least obtain a student loan. So, actually, this, the doors of the system is completely shut to you until you get a green card. When are you going to get that is a question. It's a big question because it usually takes years. So, 
uh, let's assume that you get your green card now you begin to work on the system okay so and when you walk start working on the system hello taxis a huge taxis payroll taxis they're gonna be cutting like about 30 40 percent in taxes plus all the deductible from your gross pay i mean the deductible means everything that you have to pay by the way taxes is federal taxes state taxes and some state take city taxes like new york city you're going to be paying city taxes with new york city and you will also you know pay certain deductibles like if you are paying for retirement plan they will deduct it and you pay social security taxes medicare and um what else uh what other deductibles if you are a man you're paying child support they're going to deduct it so by the time they're done with your gross you have lit literally little or nothing to go home with your net is not going to support you to any way so literally what it means that you work and 40 percent of what you work for are repatriated to the system so this is why i call this workforce a modern day slave plantation because when the slavery ended they were smart enough to come up with this system where you will come over here work as much as you want to work and you pay more to the system that you put in your pocket so this is not even done so then when they are done with your gross you have your net and then you have to face bills because in this country the reality is like we spin you know month to month paying bills sometimes those bills doesn't even take two weeks or three weeks to come so this is what we, we literally do in battling with bills whatever is left of your net you will use it to pay bills and use it to service debt because this i'm on number six now because this country is a debt country especially united states and I'm going to tell you that right now because it's easier to obtain any kind of loan. Whether as long as you are working and you have a green card, okay? Uh, credit card companies will be running around you when you come back from work. You're going to see a whole bunch of credit card companies giving you offers. It is a bait, my people. Once you are in there, you're not going to get out. People have a lot of loans. Another bad one is a student loan. If you get a student loan, you literally pay for student loan all the rest of your work life. I can make these things up. Then, if you have a car loan, and uh, what else? Uh, if you have personal loan from the bank, or, of course, mortgage loan. So you pay all that. And there is also mandatory payments like insurances, like, you know, homeowner's insurance. And then uh, homeowner's insurance is the insurance that you pay on your home if you own a home or car insurances. So by the time you're done with all these payments, you you won't have anything left except if, if you have a super paying job to be able to put food on the table or buy clothes for yourself. And if you want to buy clothes, or anything else for you, you will still have